have the zombie. On November 10th, 2012, a creature was caught on a trail cam. Now there is much speculation over this picture as a lot of people say that it's 100% a zombie. The thing is, logically, it's just a bald, tanned human with his shirt off walking through the woods at night. <laughs> but his eyes do seem to be glowing and his stance looks like he's walking straight out of the Walking Dead TV show. So hey, maybe he is a zombie. Some people think he has an opened wound on the right side of his chest which is why he is believed to be a zombie, but that part of the image is too blurry to confirm this. I mean, the most curious part is the fact that it's November and this person thing is shirtless. But who knows, perhaps he was doing some kind of illicit and that's why the cold isn't bugging him. Or he could be a zombie. One of the two. In our number nine spot, we have the Grim Reaper. On the 10th of July in 2012, a trail cam picked up what looks like to be the Grim Reaper walking around in the woods. Okay, well, obviously it's a man dressed up like the Grim Reaper, but still really scary. And if I were in the woods and accidentally stumbled into him, I would assume that I was as good as dead anyway because only a killer would would dress up like this on a day that wasn't Halloween. Okay guys, legit, I had a dream about the Grim Reaper the other night. It chopped my head off. What do you think that means? <laughs> Is my subconscious mind telling me that I've lost my head about something in my life? In our number eight spot, we have the clown. Yeah, there's way too many creepy clowns hanging out in the woods. This is a classic trail cam capture that you may have seen before as it's one of those chilling photos that has made its way around the internet. It's so creepy, you can't imagine anything else, but after this picture, he definitely pulled a John Wayne gaze. <laughs> Apparently this photo was taken on August 30th, 2009, and this clown seemed Seems like he's looking straight into the camera, so he must have spotted it. But man, what the heck was a grown man wearing a clown suit in the hottest time of the year doing walking through the woods? It's August, brah. He was definitely sweating under there. <laughs> Anyways, regardless, even if it was a cooler day, this photo still has a very creepy vibe and I wish I could unsee it, not gonna lie. In our number seven spot, we have the deer. This one is so unsettling, but also because man oh man, poor deer. This is a picture caught on a hunter's trail cam of a very sick deer wandering the forest with many sores and boils all over its body. I just wanna say, oh, Bambi. It's so sad. It looks like they even cover his eyes so he can't even see clearly, which honestly just makes my heart hurt even more. I wonder what disease caused him to have this and I really hope that he passed away peacefully without too much pain. It's weird because you never think about deers dying this way, even though of course they pass from regular disease too. But anyways, this shot was super shocking to see. In our number six spot, we have the demon in the back. In 2010, a picture of a guy and possibly his daughter was taken on a Bushnell trail camp that completely freaked out the world. It could even be a couple, it's kinda hard to tell, the girl looks rather young. Anyways, it's not their extremely smiley faces in the middle of the night that have creeped everyone out, even though, why the heck are they smiling so late at night into a trail camp? Possibly for the jokes of it, I probably would too, but still, why? <laughs> Anyways, in the far top right hand side corner, if you look closely, you'll see what looks to be a literal demon, watching them in the distance. I mean, if it's not a demon, then it's a half human, half werewolf, or full werewolf, or naked human, possibly. Whatever it is, it's pale, and for sure not wearing clothes if it is a human. But its eyes are glowing, so something tells me a demon is afoot. I bet you two seconds later, they were goners. I hope they got away safely though. I can not say got away safely without thinking of Pokemon, and running away from Pokemon in the tall grass. <laughs> Oh, the childhood years. Our brains were so impressionable. Coming up in our number five spot, we have the wolf girl. The timestamp and location of this next photo is unknown, but what is known is the fact that there is what looks to be a little female human in the middle of the woods at night, seemingly conversing with a wolf and pointing to the camera in which she and the wolf are looking straight into. Either that or the wolf was creeping up behind her and one second later, she was dinner. But regardless, this is such a creepy pic to see. This girl is probs a ghost. If not, then her mother really 
needs to keep better tabs on her child who is seemingly walking through the forest at night with a wolf. Just creepy. But maybe it's cute. Maybe they're besties. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> In our number four spot, we have the Wizard of Oz Monkey Bat. If you haven't ever watched the Wizard of Oz, then damn, you have missed out <laughs> as it's such a classic. But honestly, drop what you're doing right now and go watch it. I'm not joking. Okay, anyways, so for those of you that have seen it, you know how in The Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch has these monkey, demon-like bats that do her bidding for her. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure they are real. You may think so as well after viewing this trail cam capture. In this capture, there is something that looks exactly like the monkey, demon-like bat in the right side of the pic, chasing what looks like possibly a deer. Whatever it is, it has wings and looks nothing like anything I've ever seen before, besides in the movies. What the heck do you think it is if it's not the creature that stepped right out of that cult classic? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. In our number three spot, we have the Burlington Boogeyman. This trail cam shot had the people of Burlington, Pennsylvania alarmed. There is an old urban legend that tells the story of a ghost that haunts the forests of Burlington. The ghost is supposed to be the ghost of a Native American chief whose spirit is on the planet still as he must avenge his fallen tribe. They say. There have been many sightings of the spirit, and people say that it looks like a sort of loading skeleton, which I guess you could maybe see in this photo, but I also see a transparent owl or large animal in ghost form. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, it is creepy, and people have taken this trail cam shot as proof of its existence. Well, it's definitely proof of something existing. The people of Burlington, beware. Enemies of the air, beware. I can't help but to quote Harry Potter, always. Can anyone else relate? In our number two spot, we have the alien. Okay, okay, okay. If you aren't a believer in aliens, then explain this. What is this? What is that if not an alien? An alien ghost? First off, it's transparent, so that leads me to think it's a ghost. Second, it looks like the adult version of E.T., so that leads me towards an alien. Could there be alien ghosts out there? I think yes. But seriously though, what is that behind that deer? <laughs> like, what is it? Here we have a cute deer smiling for the cam, and behind it is some kind of laughing alien ghost. I'm truly open to your thoughts on what this is, cause I'm lost for words. Whatever it is, it's frightening. Although it looks like it's having a good time laughing, so maybe it's not a scary alien ghost. It's Casper the Jolly Alien Ghost. Okay, I'm stopping, all right, I'm done. <laughs> In our number one spot, we have the tree demon. Okay, I'm sorry about this title, but honestly, what the heck do you call this thing that was caught on this trail cam? There are no time or date stamps to report, but how the heck can this be real? This creature looks like it walked straight out of the movie Pan's Labyrinth, and I may not sleep tonight at the thought of it being real. It has a bit of a goat man vibe, am I right? <laughs> but if someone told me that this creature was birthed by a tree, then I also would not be surprised. He looks Looks like he's in the middle of discovering that he's on film and about to block his face. I don't know, man. If this shot is real, then I conclude that aliens are real, magic is real, and I must be getting my Hogwarts letter soon. It's just 21 years delayed. Whatever. <laughs> 21 years since I've been 11. <laughs> The mysterious figure. Several years ago, this photo went viral on the internet. We still don't know who posted it, but soon it made its round on a number of platforms. The picture features an eerie looking figure standing in the forest alone. It's hard to tell if they're facing away or towards the camera, but they do appear to be dressed in a long nightgown or something like that. To this day, nobody knows what this figure is of. But a number of paranormal blogs believe that whatever it is captured in this photo is not human or living and we still don't know who the original poster of this photo is. In our ninth spot today, we have the rake. The rake is this creepy humanoid creature with hollow black eyes and gaunt features. In 2003, a number of people in northeastern US reported sightings of this creature. The sightings were mainly from upstate New York. The scariest thing was shortly after there was a media blackout. Afterwards, no information on this creature was available. That was until 2006 when a group of internet sleuths decided to compile their own records 
records of the rape. While doing so, they came across this ghostly image. In the image, we see a deer and a creepy figure in the back. They believe this to be the rake. If not, then it is Lord Voldemort from the first Harry Potter movie. Like, look at that face. Doesn't it look like when Voldemort was in the back of Professor Quirrell's head? Yes. In our eighth spot, we have the woman in a nightgown. On October 15th of 2015, a forum on texasbowhunter.com encouraged people to post their spookiest trail cam pics. And a user named Chu definitely won this. He posted a photo of what appears to be a ghostly woman in a nightgown bending over. According to Chu, this photo was taken on his ranch. So his plot of land came with a cemetery where back in the day, slaves were buried. So could this be one of the slaves murdered there? The scariest part is that days prior he found bare human footprints in the area. He was sketched out because the area is pretty far away from roads or other houses. And then a little while later his camera picked up this image. To this day they don't know who this woman is or why she was on his land. Or if she's even living. In our seventh spot today, we have the Rake Part 2. Chances are, if you're into scary videos or urban legends, then you have at some point seen this creepy image on the internet. Well, guess what? I finally got down to the bottom of it and figured out where this image came from. So it was posted on a website's forum called Archery Talk. One of the users who goes by the name Hill Billy Willie posted this image saying his wildlife cam had captured it. It was posted on December 2nd of 2010. According to the guy, when he went to retrieve the camera, the ground directly in front of the tree was completely tore up and the trail cam had been torn off the tree. The camera was laying face down about 10 feet in front of the tree that it was attached to. The tree also had some of its bark scratched off. When he checked his camera, he came across this photo. What do you think? A number of people believe that this is again photographic evidence of the rake. In our sixth spot today, we have the survivor. This trail cam snapped a photo of what looks to be just regular images of a forest in Finland. But something clearly triggered the camera to take this photo. So something was moving about there. So the anonymous person that owned the camera decided to analyze the photos more in depth. And that's when they discovered a human figure located to the far right of the frame in the photo. The figure appears very tall, skinny, and gaunt looking. It honestly took me a bit to see it. Now here's the creepy part. Apparently there had been a plane crash in the area previously. So could this be a survivor of the crash? Or the ghost of one of the victims? Who knows? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the little girl. What the actual heck? Okay, is this little girl a deer whisperer? Or is she a lost child that has been raised by deers? We might never know. This is an image taken from the woods in Rowan, North Carolina. It was anonymously submitted to news station WBTV in 2017. The person said the news was allowed to make a story out of the image as long as his name was never shared. Immediately, it attracted a lot of attention. Some say it's a ghost of a girl that died in the area. Others say it's just a hoax. Either way, it's beyond creepy. Coming in at number four, we have the chupacabra. The chupacabra is a creature that likes to attack animals and drain them completely of their blood. They were first reported in 1995 in Puerto Rico when farmers found their goats, sheep, and other domestic animals uneaten, but just drained of blood, as if they were attacked by a vampire. And this photo right here is believed to be evidence of a chupacabra. chupacabra Chupacabras have been described in a variety of ways, from a weird reptilian kangaroo with red eyes to a hairless canine. Some even say it has wings. Now let's take a look at this image again. What's weird is that both creatures in the photos look like two different versions of the chupacabra. The one on the left looks like a reptilian kangaroo, whereas the one on the right looks like it has horns and wings. Weird, isn't it? Maybe there are multiple breeds of chupacabras, which makes sense as to why there are different recorded descriptions of it. Now, if this isn't the legendary chupacabra, then what the heck is it? Coming into our third spot today, we have Oh Dear. Now, this is probably the darkest and scariest image on here out of all of them. Now, it is fairly graphic, so it will be censored, but alas, don't worry, I'm here to describe it to you. This image features a deer with another deer stuck to its antlers. One problem, that one deer is decapitated. 
He was literally traveling around with his dead friend stuck to the side of his head. It can't get more gruesome than that. How that happened in the first place? is beyond me. Moving on to number two, we have the bride to be. This eerie photo was taken by new landowners in upstate New York. They were going to use this property as a hunting area, so they set up a trail camera to make sure nobody else was also using this area to hunt. But they ended up capturing something out of their nightmares. Now legend goes that a 17 year old girl was killed in that area on her wedding night. So the couple believe that they captured a photo of this girl's ghost wandering around trying to get revenge on her killer. And in our number one spot today, we have the Bigfoot. This image was taken on September 16th of 2009 and features some sort of furry creature moving about. In one image, it looks as if the creature is praying or doing the downward dog position. In the other image, it's walking along on its all fours and kind of like a monkey. This photo was taken by hunter Rick Jacobs in Pennsylvania's Algany National Forest. According to Jacobs, the camera was fastened to a tree about 150 miles northeast of Pittsburgh. He had hoped to get some photos of some deer, but he managed to capture what everyone thinks is Bigfoot. In fact, he even contacted the Bigfoot Research Organization, which I didn't know was real, but it is, and he submitted his findings to them. Group member Paul Mahita thinks that it is a photo of a young Sasquatch, whereas others believe that it is a diseased bear. Either way, it's kind of creepy, especially if it really is the Bigfoot. So Bigfoot is a large, hairy, human-like creature believed to exist in northwestern United States and western Canada. It's described as bipedal, measuring up to 2.75 meters in height and 360 kilograms in weight, and is covered in long, dark hair. Its footprints are said to measure up to 50 centimeters. So now that you know the basics, let's get into the evidence. Number 10. Bigfoot has been around for hundreds of years. Now, some people think this is just a new phenomenon that has been made up, but there have been Bigfoot sightings and reportings for hundreds of years. It first started in Canada as early as 1884 when the British colonists, a newspaper in Victoria, Canada, published an account of a gorilla-type creature captured in the area. Other accounts followed, according to the Canadian Encyclopedia. Sasquatch book author John Green compiled a list of 1,340 sightings through the 19th and 20th centuries. Now, the fact that this has been around for years and years makes me question people's doubts. Number 9. Face to Face with the Beast Lawyer Matt Moneymaker lives in Dana Point in Southern California, and in his spare time, he leads the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, which is a network of more than 3,000 people who claim to have seen the Sasquatch. In the woods of Eastern Ohio, he claims he finally came eye to eye with it. He recounted this story, saying, It was 2 o'clock in the morning, Morning, and the moon was a quarter full. Suddenly, there he was, an eight foot tall creature standing 15 feet away, growling at me. He wanted me to know that I was in the wrong place. Now, although he leads the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, no one from the organization has been able to snap a clear picture of the beast. Everyone there has their own experience with Bigfoot though. Number eight, Whitehall Trail. In 1976, multiple witnesses, including local police and a New York State trooper, said they saw a man-like beast standing over seven to eight feet tall and covered with hair. A blurry photo was taken from a Whitehall trail cam in 2010, and it is among hundreds of reported Bigfoot sightings across the state. Whitehall has its own Bigfoot event, the Sasquatch Calling Festival, with a competition for the best Bigfoot calls to attract the elusive animal. Bigfoot has reportedly been sighted in many other places, including Washington State, in 2020 which kept the hope alive for the enthusiasts across the U.S. A Mayville, New York resident, Peter Weimer, told WGRZ that he's heard from 45 eyewitnesses who claim to have seen the Sasquatch in the area around Chautauqua Lake, located 60 miles south of Buffalo. There are 100 or more witnesses in Chautauqua County that aren't talking to me, Peter told the TV station. Now, 
according to WGRZ, the county is packed with dense forests and deep gorges where a large animal could live but rarely be seen, like the black bear. Peter, who sponsors the annual Chautauqua Lake Bigfoot Expo event for believers and fans, says footprints seen in nearby Asheville, New York are further evidence that Sasquatch is out there. Number 7. Vocalizations Alleged vocalizations such as howls, screams, moans, grunts, whistles, and even a form of supposed language have been reported and allegedly recorded from Bigfoot. Some of these alleged vocalization recordings have been analyzed by individuals such as retired US Navy cryptologic linguistic Scott Nelson. He analyzed audio recordings from the early 1970s said to be recorded in the Sierra Nevada mountains dubbed the Sierra Sounds. When speaking about his findings, he said, It's definitely a language, it's definitely not in human origin, and it could not have been faked. So yeah, they have their own language we choose to ignore. Number 6. Footprints Investigator Jimmy Chilcutt of the Conroe Police Department in Texas, who specializes in finger and footprints, has analyzed more than 150 casts of big footprints that Meldrum, the Idaho State professor, keeps in a laboratory. Jim says one footprint found in 1987 in Walla Walla in Washington State has convinced him that Bigfoot is real. He said, The ridge flow pattern and the texture was completely different from anything I've seen. It certainly wasn't human and of no known primate that I've examined. The print ridges flowed lengthwise along the foot, unlike human prints which flow across. The texture of the ridges was about twice the thickness of a human, which indicated that this animal has a real thick skin. Now, number five, Bigfoot like creature found. Showman Frank Hansen exhibited the Iceman, a Bigfoot-like creature encased in ice at the International Livestock Exposition in Chicago. This relic of the Ice Age was found in the waters off Siberia. In December 1968, Bernard Hillevmans of Royal Institute of Natural Sciences of Belgium examined the creature in a trailer in Minnesota. They said, We consider this to be a genuine and unique example of the most priceless specimen. In a scientific journal, Bernard declared that he discovered a new species of man. In April 1969, the Smithsonian appeared appealed to the FBI director J. Edgar Hoover for help. Hoover declined, citing the absence of a violation of a federal law within our investigation jurisdiction. It's reported that the US Customs would look into it, the body, after all it was supposedly imported. Meanwhile, Frank put a model of the specimen on display. Number 4. Bigfoot Video The most famous Bigfoot video is a short film taken in 1967 by Roger Patterson and Bob Gilman, known as the Patterson Film. Shot in Bluff Creek, the video shows what appears to be a large and hairy bipedal ape or Bigfoot striding through a clearing. The video's authenticity is still debated, with some thinking it was likely a hoax, with the ape-like figure just a human wearing a costume. Despite this, it is seen as one of the most compelling photographic evidence of Bigfoot. It appears to document a female Bigfoot striding along a riverbank in Northern California, and it certainly wasn't human. Number 3. Suing the Government Over Bigfoot Todd Standing claims his first close encounter with Bigfoot was in 2005, and that it dramatically changed his life. The filmmaker and wilderness guide from Edmonton says he saw a 9 foot tall bipedal creature with a very human like face high up in the Rocky Mountains of British Columbia. He says he saw it stand up and squat down. His video of the sighting, posted on YouTube, has more than 300,000 views, and he is suing the provincial government of BC in an effort to prove the existence of Bigfoot in court. He says that provincial wildlife officials are turning a blind eye to his findings. His lawsuit calls for a judge to declare that Sasquatch exists, and for a wildlife official to accompany him on a three month hunt for one of the creatures. He said, I've seen Sasquatch so many times, I mean over 50 times. I filmed them eight different times. He claims fish and wildlife officials are deliberately ignoring his findings, which do not include any actual specimens, living or dead. They won't look into the evidence, so that's why he must go to court to prove it. Number 2. A Bigfoot Study A Bigfoot study called the Sasquatch Genome Project was led by genetic scientists. It was a 5 year study and took almost $500,000 to fund. The group followed a mother and daughter Bigfoot in Kentucky and they claim there's thousands of them in the USA. The group captured videos and photos as evidence, but they also acquired DNA. The DNA has given them a theory that this creature is a hybrid of human. The DNA was sent to UT Southwestern, New York University, and North Louisiana Crime Lab. The 
results came back as human, but others did not. The scientists say whether you want to accept it or not, they have found proof that Sasquatch is a human relative that arose approximately 15,000 years ago as a hybrid cross of a modern Homo sapiens with an unknown primate species. The group called for this to be recognized officially, saying the government at all levels must recognize them as indigenous people and immediately protect their human and constitutional rights against those who would see in their physical and cultural differences a license to hunt, trap, or kill them. And number one, the FBI got involved. An Oregon man, intent on proving the existence of a mythical creature known as Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the Abominable Snowman, and Yeti, in 1976, managed to get the FBI to test hair and tissue samples that he believed might help his case, according to newly released records. The FBI has analyzed hair in connection with the search for Sasquatch, aka Bigfoot, an internal FBI memo noted in February 1977 said. The man who spurred the analysis, 93 year old Peter Brine, told CNBC that he hasn't given up hope proving that Bigfoot is real, if exceedingly rare creature. FBI agent wrote back to Peter saying, We will examine the hairs and tissue mentioned in your letter. It was the first time that the FBI apparently tested a sample of hair to see if it was Bigfoot, according to the records, which contained photocopied images of the hairs. The FBI said the examination of the hair concluded a study of morphological characteristics such as root structure, meldorari structure, and cuticle thickness in addition to scale casts. Also, the hairs were compared directly with hairs of known origin under a comparison microscope. At the end of all that, it was concluded as a result of these examinations that the hairs are of deer family origin. The hair sample you submitted is being returned as enclosed in this letter it said. Was it really deer hair or were they covering up the fact that it actually was Bigfoot? The fact that they even tested the hair is insane. What I'm just gonna call the zombie. Reddit user love is a love of an axe uploaded this image a couple years back and it's pretty haunting. Uh, they wrote, my uncle has a trail cam at my old grandparents house which are both dead and the house is abandoned. The camera takes three pics every time a motion is detected. This thing only appears in one out of three of the photos. They also elaborated in a comment uh, down below saying, for more info for anyone wondering, my uncle was up there there and left. The trail cam caught him leaving in his car completely. The trail cam takes pictures so fast it looks like stop motion if looked through quickly. And this thing walks up six minutes after he left. It's only in a few pics and the time says the thing was only on screen for one second. And the next picture is just gone. Never walked out of frame, just went away. And you know what, if all that's true, then this is pretty freaky. Whatever this figure is, does not appear to be normal. Its limbs seem all messed up, its clothes look all ragged. It looks like an undead corpse roaming around in the middle of the night. Number nine, the large creature. This next image was posted to Reddit by user Adjacent Gunman and shows something. It's hard to make out what's going on here, but the user said it was taken on a trail cam on his property and looks to be a very tall creature of some sort holding a coyote by the throat. This second image is a bit more brightened and you can definitely see the thing's eyes pop out a bit more, but it still blends in with the darkness. You don't get a sense of what its body looks like at all. So if it is a sad Sasquatch of some kind, it uh, has some pretty dark fur. Some commenters said it could be a hunter on his property, but the uploader said it's not possible, or at least highly unlikely, as the placement of the eyes beside his cabin would make whatever this thing is about eight feet tall. Now, looking at the coyote's limbs, they look very angular, almost photoshopped perhaps, or maybe whatever the creature holding it is, like it's maybe blocking part of its body. I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell. Let us know in the comments what you think. This footage was uploaded to the YouTube channel Jimmy B Trail Cams and shows what looks to be a large hairy creature walking across the screen through the trees. Jimmy B uploads all kinds of trail cam videos in Birch Bay, Washington. There are videos of foxes, wolves, hawks, owls, and this, and that's kind of what sells it for me. Like this isn't someone who's just seems to be a Bigfoot enthusiast. He just seems to have a passion for wildlife of all kinds. Probably wasn't even trying to capture something mysterious like this, but just happened to. And the footage is not super clear, but for a Bigfoot video, 
you do see quite a bit. The, the bar is not very high for Bigfoot videos. You see that the creature moves with this classic Bigfoot gait. Its arms hang by its sides. It seems to have like a pretty long strides. Uh, it, it, he posted an update after uploading this footage saying four of his eight trail cameras were missing the day after this footage was taken. So that's mysterious. Number seven, the skunk ape. Just recently, this image captured on a Florida game cam was shared online. The image was taken in Ocala National Park in a hunter's food plot and shows some kind of ape-like creature. Definitely ain't a deer. And I gotta say, if someone uh, is just in a costume here, good job. It looks pretty convincing. I, I don't look at this image and go, oh, that's, that's a gorilla costume. The fur just looks too, for lack of a better word, real. And the face looks uh, like an actual animal. The dude who shared the image said, looks almost like it's holding a baby with its fingers on the mother's nose. I can kind of see that, but uh, what do you all think? Let us know in the comments once again. At our number six spot, we have what I like to call too many deer. Now, this image certainly isn't as ominous as some of the others on this list, and I am quite fond of deer. They're majestic, they're beautiful and elegant animals, but there's something a little unsettling about this image. Like, there's just too many goddamn deer in this forest. It looks like a, like a deer army. It's reminding me of Saruman's Urukai, like swarming the forest to capture Frodo here. Right? Isn't everyone else thinking that? Looking at this picture? Everywhere you look, there's another deer. They just go on for miles, it looks like. I guess too much of anything, though, is kinda icky, right? Like, take cats, for example. Adorable on their own, but like only to a point. Too many, and things get a little uncomfortable. The stereotypical crazy cat lady, it's a thing for a reason. I also think the fact that every single one of them is staring directly into the camera makes it kind of off-putting. This was obviously taken with the flash on, so it's a deer in headlights kind of situation, but uh, looking at this picture, I still have a bit of like a, oh God, like, what do you want from me? Kind of feeling. Next on the list, we have the ghost. So take a look at this image. What do you see? Well, obviously there is, once again, another deer in the foreground looking up at something, but just what the hell is that in the background? It's hard to make out exactly what this odd shape is. To me, it looks like a naked Voldemort howling at the moon. It looks ghostly too, only the, the bust is fully formed. The rest of it looks like it fades out, almost like mist. Maybe there's a pond behind the deer and that's what this thing is like maybe submerged in. It's hard to tell, but this is kind of a freaky image. A pale, bald ghost screaming in pain behind a confused deer. I can make out what looks to be a brow ridge, a wide open mouth. Whatever it is, it looks like to have a, maybe a gaunt, almost skeletal face. This would actually make for a perfect like black metal album cover. Just throw some overly complex, indistinguishable text on there and, uh, and you're good. Next up, we have the clown. These mysterious images have been floating around online since at least 2010. They could even be, have been taken before. No one is exactly sure. We're not even 100% sure where the trail cam photos were taken. So this could very well be a hoax, but if it isn't and someone's trail cam just happened to snap a couple pictures of some mysterious man in a clown costume roaming around in the forest, then that makes these images very nightmarish. The image was used in a news story about the string of weird clown sightings that happened in the summer of 2016. Anyone remember, remember that? But it was discovered that the image was actually uploaded to the Field and Stream Facebook page in 2010, a well-known hunting and fishing page. So whoever this was, they were donning their clown outfit and heading out to the forest long before that magical clown crazed summer of 2016 that we all miss. Some say he was just joking around. God swallowed him, my opinion. Nope, I reckon he's still out there, clowning around and carrying on. But one thing's absolutely certain, something about this image stumped the internet. That's why it's famous. That's why nobody knows his name. He's the clown who hid. Number three, we have the werewolf. In May of 2022, at the Amarillo Zoo in Texas, one of the cameras picked up this creature at around 1.30 in the morning. Now, whatever this thing is, it was walking around outside of the zoo, so it wasn't likely to be one of their animals, unless something escaped. And if it is an escaped animal, well, what exactly is it? Like a lemur wearing a lion mask? It seems to be walking on its hind legs, so unless the camera just happened to snap a four-legged creature while it stood upright for a 
brief moment, it's hard to imagine this being a wolf or a dog. Speaking of wolves though, a lot of folks have been comparing this to maybe a werewolf, and I can definitely see that. It has, looks to be pointy ears, it's got a mane of fur on its back. I also think it looks maybe a bit alien, but again, let us know what you think down below. I think if we all put our heads together, we can, uh, we can crack this case. Coming in at second place, we have another ghost. This image was captured in Whiteman Hill in Wayland, New York, and was shared by Kelly Morgan, who found the image on her brother's trail cam. It depicts some sort of ghostly figure roaming around in front of the camera. There's some sort of beauty uh, in this image a little bit. The, the figure looks like it's glowing a little bit. Morgan made a statement saying that her grandmother told her a story about three men who took the life of a 17-year-old on her wedding day in 1882. Apparently the girl was buried in a cemetery nearby. So could this image be the tortured soul of that bride wandering through the woods in the dead of night? Or is it just a hoax? And finally, we have the rake. In this clip shared by TikTok user Cryptalker, we see a strange, lanky creature crawling through someone's backyard on all fours. It seems to resemble the famous rake internet phenomenon uh, where the most famous creepy trail camera picture comes from. This one here, yeah, we've all seen that image, right? A gaunt, pale, spindly looking creature staring into the camera in the dead of the night. Well, this thing looks kind of like that. I'd say it could be someone just walking around on all fours, but whatever this thing is, it's incredibly thin, way too small to be human. All I know is I don't like this thing. It looks like an even longer, lankier, creepier version of Gollum. How many fantasy movie references did I make in that list? I think like four. I don't know. I don't know how Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings got in there, but is what it is. And we have a demon watching a baby. Hi there, demon. What are you doing watching this baby? You're a creep. An Imja user posted this picture of a baby ultrasound and it caused some waves on the internet. They posted the image with the caption, a friend's ultrasound when you see it, dot, dot, dot. The image got 931 upvotes and was seen nearly 12,000 times. Can you guys see it? That's right, look in on the right. Maybe we can get a little bit of zoom here. Hello to you, womb demon. Ah, womb demon, two words I didn't think I was gonna say today. This womb demon looks pretty breast delicious, so we can only assume it's a lady demon. What she wants with this baby, we don't know. Other people are saying this image looks more like a Hindu goddess than a demon. One commenter wrote, I'm seeing a friendly mermaid. Everyone else is seeing a demon. We're all weird. That's very, very true. We are crazy. What do you guys see? Demon, mermaid, Hindu goddess? Let me know. We have another one from social media at number nine. We have the Wisconsin Trail Camera Demon. This image was posted on Reddit in December 2012 and got 1.1 thousand upvotes. The picture is allegedly a trail cam image from a trail in Wisconsin. For those of you that don't know that much about trail cameras, they're motion sensored cameras that capture footage if an animal walks by. They're usually used by wildlife enthusiasts to pick up on close images of things like bears or moose or deer. Anyway, this trail cam pic picked up an entirely different animal. In fact, some people are saying it's not an animal at all. They're saying it's a demon. It definitely looks like a ghost and I don't know, it's somewhat tormented. I don't fancy hanging out with this ghoul. It needs to stay far away from my campsite. Demon or witch at number eight, you decide. We have some police dash cam footage here. Now this video comes from the Azusa Police Department of Canyon City. Police officer Malik is driving down a nondescript Californian road at 3 a.m. when they come across a woman who has started a fire. There's no real explanation as to what is going on here. The woman stood in the middle of a fire circle and we can't see her face, which leaves you to believe she's either a witch or a demon. Basically, she's some combination of pure evil. Even if she isn't a demon, I bet she's summoning one. Coming in at number seven, we have El Chubacabra. Is it a wild dog? Is it a chupacabra? A chupacabra is a legendary creature in folklore, a blood-sucking animal vampire that we're gonna call a demon for the purpose of this video. The legend of El Chupacabra is most popular in Puerto Rico. It also has spread to northern Mexico and the southern states of the United States, especially Texas. This demon was caught on police dash cam and the officer involved in the incident was totally vexed. The footage was taken in 2008 and has caused a debate ever since. Now the video description reads, a police dashboard camera catches what some people might think is proof of the legendary Chupacabra. Is it proof that he lives and roams in the fields of the Lone Star State? 
I don't know. Now this animal was seen running down a dirt path along fence lines in a rural Texas road. Honestly, to me, it does look like just kind of a wild dog, maybe a coyote, more so than it does a demon, but some people are refusing to budge on it being El Chubacabra. Coming in at number six, we have the Balinese Flame Demon. In 2016, Bali experienced some very dry weather that led to a number of fires. Following a fire at Padang Padang Beach and at the Pasar Padang Market, the oldest market in Bali, another devastating fire hit Kangu. An image of the local five surf school in Batu Bolong was shared on social media. While luckily nobody was hurt in the fire, some eagle-eyed social media users saw something very unsettling in the flames. One of the commenters pointed out that the shape of the flames looked like Ugu Ugu, a demon statue that are used for festivals in Naopi. In Balinese culture, these statues represent spiritual pollutants admitted from the activities of human beings. And these statues are used in a parade and then burnt at the end as a process of purification. There is a really strange and sad irony in the face of a demon that represents human malice appearing in a fire, especially when these demon effigies are usually burned to rid Bali of evil. Coming in at number five, we have a genie. This picture is from an Islamic website that documents supernatural occurrences and discusses early Arabian and Islamic mythology. This is reportedly a jinn, a ghost or a genie, that lives in the Hira cave. The creature was only seen after the photo was developed. Now, according to some sources, some Islamic news publications went wild for the picture, saying bad luck befell the photographer. Some even said that he dropped dead. In Islamic faith, magic is prohibited and considered an evil perversion of Allah. What is this genie demon doing in a cave? We just don't know. Is this a Dementor at number four? You let me know. So I love Harry Potter so much. I even have my own Harry Potter YouTube channel. I'm a Slytherin for those wondering. And whilst I may be a darker witch, I'm still not on board with a Dementor. Would we call a Dementor a demon? Yeah. I I think we would. It's a demon that sucks out your soul, which is actually probably my least favorite kind. Either way, it seems a demonic looking figure was spotted over the city of Kitwe in Zimbabwe. And to me, it looks like a descending Dementor looking for a kiss. The mysterious cloud formation looked to be about 100 meters long and loomed over a shopping center in the city for around 30 minutes. Eyewitnesses said some started worshipping the mist, thinking it was a manifestation of God, while others ran away. I think I would crack out my Patronus and hope for the best. Can you guess what mine is? Let me know in the comments section down below. Coming into number three, we have the Phoenix New Year Nightmare. On New Year's Day of 2017, Facebook user Richard Christensen spotted a demon lurking in his Arizona hood. He shared the pictures to the social media site with the caption, what the hell do you see in this picture for reals, anybody? The image quickly went viral, garnering over 100,000 shares. The picture appears to show a winged demon, perhaps a mothman standing in a residential street. Some people were brandishing it a soldier of Satan. Either way, national news publications picked up on the story and people were pretty freaked out. Some people say it's just a palm tree, others are convinced it's a demonic presence lurking in the southern states of the USA. Coming into number two, we have 9-11 smoke demons. While we're led to believe that the world can change irrevocably at something so small as the flicker of butterfly wings, there are days in the history books where we can pinpoint events that change the course of humanity forever. One of those days is September the 11th, 2001, or 9-11. On this day, two hijacked planes flew into the World Trade Center Twin Towers, another into the Pentagon, and another crashed into a field. Nearing 3,000 people lost their lives, and thousands, if not millions more, had the course of their future altered. The worst terror attack on US soil was undoubtedly an act of evil, but some people even say they saw the face of evil in the smoke that billowed from the devastating fires that took down the buildings in Manhattan. Look for yourself. Did the many cameras pointing at the World Trade Center capture a demon? Is it the face of the devil himself? Let me know what you think. Okay, I've picked number one because actually it is so dramatic and caused some serious waves during its day. This was a televised event. Coming in to number one, we have ABC's 2020 Exorcism. This one is so, so, so much to deal with. In April 1991, 29 million people tuned in to ABC's 2020, a controversial episode hosted by Barbara Walters that asked if demons were real. What made headlines about this episode was that it televised a real life exorcism. In the episode, we see Catholic priest Father LeBaire exorcise demons from a young girl named Gina. Honestly, she's off the charts in this video. She is screaming, she is being cray, she thinks she's actually possessed. The girl seems to switch wildly between different 
and personalities, her voice is strained and demonic, and the clergyman identifies two demons within her, Minga and Zion. Her parents surround her and pray for her recovery. Now, before she's exercised, she drinks holy water and vomits. This is just very, very shocking viewing for the 90s. The exorcism spanned six hours, and afterwards, Father Labar believed that he cured her of a serious demonic oppression. Others think that she was just mentally ill, and to be honest, I don't know if she was. This was some serious schizophrenia. Either way, following the exorcism, she seemed to be cured. And the Chernobyl exclusion zone. When it comes to creepy, prohibited places, it's tough to beat the Chernobyl exclusion zone. And if you guys have ever seen one of my videos before, then you might already know I have a specific disdain for creepy dolls. And wouldn't you know it, the exclusion zone is filled with them. There's baby dolls sitting in abandoned hospitals, creepy dolls sitting on windowsills, some propped up on skeletal bed frames, others sprawled out in piles of debris. But the creepiest of all, I have to say, is this one wearing a gas mask. I mean, between the gas masks all over the floor and the one covering the doll's face, I gotta say this is one of the creepier photos I have seen emerge. Now, to be fair, there is a high possibility that it's due to some tourism interference, but interference or not, it's still not something I would want to stumble on in the wild. Next up at number 9, Gas Mask Island. Speaking of gas masks, located about 180 kilometers south of Tokyo is the island of Miyaki-jima. And although it's not completely prohibited, it's definitely got many reasons to keep you away. For starters, the island is the host to Mount Oyama, an active strato volcano, which as far as volcanoes go, are just about the most dangerous and unpredictable you can get. In fact, their last major eruption in 2000 required a complete evacuation of the island. But it's not just the chance that the volcano could erupt at any given moment, it's also that it emits poisonous sulfuric gas with pretty much no warning at all. So by law, all 3,000 residents are required to carry a gas mask with them at all times, otherwise you could literally die. And while I can respect that these masks are for safety of those who live there, you can't deny it looks a little creepy. And if the fatal poisonous gas, mandatory gas masks, and potential volcano eruption didn't deter you, I will also mention that it's located in the Dragon's Triangle, which is essentially the Pacific equivalent to the Bermuda Triangle, and there have been many reports of vessels mysteriously disappearing while trying to cross. Coming in at number 8, North Sentinel Island. Home to the Sentinelese people, who are one of the few remaining tribes in the world that have zero contact with modern civilization, North Sentinel Island is strictly forbidden to any visitors of any kind. Now, not only is the island prohibited to visitors under the government of India in order to protect the isolated tribe from disease, but it's also a matter of safety, as the tribe have garnered a reputation to violently drive away anyone who tries to enter their premises. Now, of course, due to their incredibly solitude nature, there aren't too many photos of the people in North Sentinel, but I mean, considering that most who have attempted to make contact have died that shouldn't come as a huge shock. However, this photo in particular is probably one of the most famous ones captured, and it tells you everything you need to know about why you should just leave these indigenous people alone. Coming in at number 7, Area 51. You would be hard pressed to find a more famously publicly restricted place in America than the alien conspiracy theory zone of Area 51. And so of course, I had to add it onto the list for you today. Over the years, Area 51 has been the suspect of countless UFO and alien conspiracies. And despite the fact that this top secret base has been around for some 70 years, the government actually refused to acknowledge its existence until 2013. And of course, this ongoing secrecy has only added to the suspicion that the government is hiding something extraterrestrial from the public. But things got heated up even further after a passenger on an American Airlines flight snapped a few photos of a bright, shining disk while flying over the prohibited area. Many UFOologists online 
headline jump to the conclusion that this strange disc here was an alien spaceship. Well, non-believers shot it down saying that it was more likely a solar power station or satellite. But I mean, you're looking at the photo, so why don't you tell me what you think it is? Coming in at number 6, Ark of the Covenant. For those who aren't familiar, the Ark of the Covenant is a legendary artifact believed to be the most sacred relic of the Israelites. Famously described as a wooden chest covered in pure gold with an elaborately designed lid called the mercy seat. According to the book of Exodus, the ark contains the two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. And according to the New Testament book of Hebrews, it also contains Aaron's rod and a pot of manna. So essentially, it's pretty much the biggest of deals. And a church in Ethiopia claims to be its keeper. Closely guarded in the city of Aksum, it's said that the monks who guard the treasure have been trained to kill with their bare hands. What's more, by some accounts, only the monk who is designated as guardian is able to see the ark. And after assuming his role, he isn't allowed to leave the church grounds for the remainder of his life. However, due to the secrecy surrounding the relic, archaeologists haven't been able to confirm the legitimacy. But make no mistake, the mystery surrounding the relic has resulted in quite a few trespassers attempting to seal the ark. The most recent of which was in 2021 where an estimated 1,000 people were hiding inside the church, 750 of which were found and killed by the Ethiopian government, while other civilians, like this woman, were severely injured. So yeah, just don't go snooping around this place. Coming in at number 5, North Korea. As a whole, North Korea is an incredibly top secret country. I mean, that's kind of their entire thing. Now, are you technically able to visit? I mean, yes, sort of. but. The loops that you have to jump through to get there, mixed with the strict conditions that follow in order to be a tourist here, make it not only a nearly impossible destination, but a very dangerous one too. However, what we do know about North Korea is their dedication to their military. In fact, they live by a military first policy, or Songun, and impose mandatory military training on all men for 10 years and women for 8 years. Plus, they currently rank as the second highest number of military and paramilitary personnel following Vietnam. But it's not just that. They also hold military parades to not only celebrate their army, but also showcase their nuclear attack capabilities, which is a terrifying thought if you ask me. Just take a look at this photo here. I mean, it's giving a certain unfavored 1930s military vibe now, is it not? Seriously, if you want to be freaked out, you can look it up yourself. There are plenty of photos of their haunting, goose-stepping military parades that will chill you to the bone. Coming in at number 4, Snake Island. Found off the coast of Brazil in the Atlantic Ocean is an island that even if it wasn't illegal to visit, would be the last place you would find me. Quite literally, the place of nightmares, this island is home to the critically endangered Golden Lancehead Pit Viper, who became trapped on the island thousands of years ago at the end of the last ice age. Apparently, as the ocean levels were rising, due to the melting ice, this island became disconnected from the mainland, which in turn forced the snakes to adapt to a new environment, eventually increasing their population to such a high degree that the island was rendered entirely too dangerous for public visitation. Now I bet you're wondering, there are tons of venomous snakes everywhere, why is this place so different? Well, for starters, it is pretty small as far as islands go, only measuring about 106 acres, but it also is home to upwards of 4 thousand snakes, each weaponized with a venom so deadly that it can actually melt human flesh. In case you're wondering, that is roughly one snake per square meter or 10 feet. Plus, if one does bite you, you are lucky to survive for another hour. So with that many deadly snakes trapped on that small of an island, pretty much everywhere you look is going to look like this photo here. And not only is it Indiana Jones' nightmare, it is also mine. Coming in at number 3, Poveglia Island. It might be a small, gorgeous dot of land in the Venice Lagoon, but this island is far from a picture-perfect Italian destination, and definitely not a place you want to trespass onto. Way back in the day, after already losing roughly half 
of the Venetian population to the Black Death in 1347, by the 1400s the people of Venice discovered the concept of quarantine, and felt like they'd hit a gold mine. So by the time the next outbreaks occurred, they started sending over anyone with even the mildest of symptoms to nearby islands, most famously Poveglia Island. The infected populace was forced to remain quarantined on the island for 40 days, but without any actual cure available, pretty much everyone still died and so it became a mass gravesite, incinerating most of the dead bodies so as not to let the disease spread. But the horrors of this island did not end there. Fast forward to the 20th century and it became a mental institution where its reputation only got worse. Allegedly, the experiments performed on the patients were so unethical and cruel that the doctor responsible took his life to try and escape the crimes he had caused. However, some out there think he was tormented by the thousands of ghosts already haunting the island and ended his life to escape their torments. Now, while the ghost story behind it might be up for debate, nowadays it is strictly prohibited to visitors, and as you can see by this terrifying photo, it remains scattered with the bones of all who died here. Coming in at number 2, Dulce Base. While Area 51 is for sure the most talked about allegedly alien affiliated base, there is another out there that might even be more terrifying. Now, before we get into the spooky stuff, let me start off by saying that although there are quite a few rumors and documented reports surrounding the facility, its actual existence is still ultimately unproven. However, one man, Phil Schneider, insisted on its reality until his death in 1996. While alive, Phil claimed to be a former government employee involved in the construction of the alleged base and became quite well known for several public presentations about the top secret location. His most famous statement came in a presentation in 1995 where he claimed that during the initial construction, the team encountered alien beings already beneath the ground, who he then got into a firefight with, suffering several burns as well as the loss of several fingers. Allegedly, the photo here shows Phil after the attack, and I mean, it's definitely unsettling. But what's even more unsettling is that according to Phil, back in 1954, the US government signed a treaty with aliens allowing them to perform experiments on humans in exchange for technology, meaning that all the alleged alien abductions would not only be something that the government government is aware of, but they signed off on. Now, is this entire thing entirely conjecture? Absolutely. But hey, crazier things have been true. And last up in our number one spot, Mary Reeser. On the morning of July 2nd, 1951, in St. Petersburg, Florida, Mary Reeser's landlady went up to the old woman's apartment to deliver a telegram. But upon her arrival, noticed something strange, that her door was warm to the touch. Still, she opened it nervously, and to her horror, she found Mary almost completely reduced to a pile of of ashes on her chair, with only a small part of her left leg and her shockingly shrunken skull remaining. But what exactly happened to Mary? Well, that's kind of the million dollar question. Local authorities were unable to determine the cause of the fire, as the rest of the apartment was relatively unscathed. And when the FBI became involved, they determined Mary had essentially gone up in flames like the wick of a candle, while her own body fat fed the flame. But still, the question of how the fire started in the first place remained unanswered. Often referred to as the cinder lady, there was a theory at the time that Mary suffered spontaneous human combustion, but whatever it was that happened certainly left a terrifying crime scene. If you enjoyed this video about disturbing trail cam footage, then you have to check out this video next. It's about disturbing security threats that could actually end the world. Holy crap. Click the video now to find out more.